Hey, uh, you all right? Yeah, yeah, it's just... I don't know about this one. What, about High Guardian Spice? It should be an easy one because there's a lot to criticize about it. Yeah, but you know me. I'm not someone who just wants to bash things for the sake of it. I don't want to break things down. Besides, I... Kind of like some parts of it. <coughs> how was that? Okay, how about this? Me and you have the same brains that we share with Season. So how about I bring in someone a bit more critical to balance things out then? Alright, fine, fine, but you know how this review's gonna end, I'm just saying. Luckily I know a certain succubus who's been begging for a collab for forever. Hmm. No, you're not getting context for that. You, me, collab, now! Wait, what the hell are you even doing? No time! Greetings Watchful Watchers, one and all, the Watchful One here. And I'm your favorite adorable succubus, Sleepy. <laughs> so you're really dragging me to do this, huh? Yeah, pretty much. This is what you get for begging for a collab. But first, a bit of backstory before we begin. Almost four years ago, Crunchyroll announced that they were making their own original anime. And one of the first ones that they showed off was High Guardian Spice, which was basically meant to be their flagship anime girl show. However, instead of actually showing us anything like a proper animated trailer, the trailer was just basically them saying, yep, we're making this, it's happening. And Sanon, I really hate that that's becoming a thing. Can we have a proper trailer and not a, yep, it's happening trailer? Especially since the only actual indication of the art style and animation was this image. Needless to say, the internet collectively lost their shit. Well, yes, it is pretty cool that the casting, whether on a technical standpoint, or at least the voice actors are predominantly 50% female, that's the only thing they focused on! Like, really! N never mind the quality of sound design, animation, or whether the story would be good. No, no, never mind that. Put that away. Get the fuck out of here. But then after that happened, basically the show went underground. It was completely and utterly radio silent after that for about four years, with next to no updates on how it was actually going or if the show was being developed at all. Leading mostly everyone to hope that they'd cancel the project out of sheer secondhand embarrassment. Sadly, we don't always get what we want, like that one relative you pray to only see during family get-togethers, or not remember that single embarrassing moment you had when you were in high school. It burst through with the trailer saying, yep, it's pretty much happening. And it pretty much led to the response you expected from people. However, it's finally out, so I think it's time we had to take a look at the show. And tear it in you one? No, to be critical, to talk about the good, the bad, and the spicy. However, before you begin, I feel we should mention we are only talking about the finished product, not any of the drama or the like that was surrounding it. We are judging the final product as a product. Aww, <laughs> Mr. No Fun Allowed here. <laughs> well, it won't stop us from commenting on the writing, animation, and direction, because... <laughs> oh boy, is there still so much to discuss. I am... can't wait. But uh, keep in mind, it's only our opinion. Plus the show isn't unsalvageable, so we're gonna at least be positive at some point. But more on that later. For now, let's start with... All around me are familiar faces. And now for your entertainment, here's a short impression of what it's like watching the first couple episodes of Spiced Guardian for the first time. Why is the audio mix so bad? This music's too loud. What's with this voice acting? It sounds like they're reading the lines instead of emoting. You know, the whole point of voice acting. Am I crazy or is it too colorful? Is this supposed to... Is this supposed to be funny? I mean, it is, but in a way that's not... You know, the intention. Oh, hey, keep flying Mimic. I... Wait. That's not... That, they did not... That's not a PNG of bread. That's not a P Oh my god. They actually put a PNG of bread. And not only that, they put PNG of milk on a jar. They had a PNG lamppost, and that's like the worst photoshopping they could have ever done. Uh, not even gorillas could stoop that low. Oh, hey, waifu. Oh, golly gee willikers, Scoob! I wonder who wears the pants in this lesbian relationship. This is a mystery not even Sherlock would be able to solve by his own. Not gonna lie, I'm slowly aggravated with this show's attempt at anything. At all. We're not even halfway, and I'm already just... 
And this is just the first couple episodes, mind you. First impressions are important, kids. And this one was... How would you describe it? Terrible. Very harsh, but very fair. And keep in mind, this was made over four years. And it shows in the first episode, as a lot of things have not aged well, especially with the intro. The intro, I'm sorry, I cannot sit through it. Shame for the outro. It's the most generic uwu kawaii girl intro ever. And what's sad about the voice work is... Well, for relatively unknowns anyway, the voice work isn't awful for the most part. Most are clearly trying, but why is it mixed so badly? Great place. Small, but really memorable. On top of the weirdly mixed voice audio, there's also some weirdly placed sound effects. And very, very, very interesting acting. Do you mean Slime Boy? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, okay, okay. Okay. Slime Boy, while precious, has the most delayed delivery and not to mention out of place mic quality compared to the rest. This ain't food fight, why does it sound like this? Oh, she's out back. She's elbow deep in the uh, turn up. Oh, it's fine. We're in break. We, we got catapulted out because of a traveler infestation. station. made me break your noises. It's okay, dude. Broken instruments make good new sound. I think he's trying to go for a sleepy delivery, but to be perfectly honest, it just comes off as someone learning to speak English for the first time ever. And no disrespect to the VA or any of the VAs for that matter, as I'm sure they were excited to work on the show. Hell, anybody would kill to even be a side character on any kind of show. But dude, Slime Boy, you could have at least used a new mic. Or if you're using your phone as a mic, use a better place to record. This is clearly potato sound quality. Like 144p levels of just potato sound. Just the sheer utter fact that this was an officially licensed anime inspired animation that was done in production limbo in 2019 only to be recently released a few weeks ago by Crunchyroll and that this is a result of their sound design like bewilders and astounds me incredibly. Oh my god. Just we're not even halfway through and I'm already feel like I'm going to die. I mean, they did fix it after they got called out on it, but it shouldn't still sound like that by execution. You know? It really shouldn't sound like that at all, really. Not that better mic quality would help because the writing isn't much better in a lot of ways. It kind of leads into a bigger problem as the show seems to be all over the place in tone. It's either so obvious young kids can understand it, but older teens and young adults will be insulted, but it's also dealing with some stuff a bit too, well, older for them. And not just the blood and swearing, mind you, in the second half of the season, but also, well, the LGBT issues, but more on that in a bit. Ooh, sexy foreshadowing. Love this. So what are the characters like in this show? Well, we have the main protagonist, her lesbian partner, small tomboy, Garnet with a bow and arrow, gold fox with freckles, and purpled hair, Regina George. Who, although she's kind of a badly written antagonist, I can't really call her an antagonist, but let's call her a tsundere, is probably the only character I respect unironically. We'll get into that, but I just feel like we... The more we get into this, the less this review will be any more positive. Believe me, I'm trying to be positive. I'm saving all the goods up for later on so we can end on a high note. But that being said, there are a lot of faults with this show so I'm not going to pull any punches. And no, not just on a technical level, but the writing even affects the characters. Who are really hit or miss in quality. The show will be one of the reasons why I have trust issues, watch. Oh come on, don't be like that. We haven't even gotten into the meat of the show yet. You mean the bare bones of the show? Again, don't be like that, but it won't be any snickerdoodle cookies for you. Ugh, fine. Good, succubus. Anyway, characters. A show can be made or broken by the characters. A show with bad animation or a lackluster story can be saved if the characters are good. However, while the characters aren't awful in the show, a lot of them are at best good, but some of the middle or bad ones are either forgettable, done to death, or just outright annoying. For me, personally, I just feel like the writing and art direction is downright detestable. Writing especially messes me up. Because, oh god, I'm gonna sound like very biased due to my association with these people. 
How biased? I'm going full Gen Z stand. I'm gonna be more biased than someone defending their old partner, really. Oof. I feel like I've seen better writing and analysis anarchy than here. And that is a fan project made by at least a good couple of friends on the internet who love both the MLP and TF2 franchise. That is the lowest bar you could go and not even the limbo would cast the bar that low. The writing has eccentricities and quirks, but I can at least say it's entertaining. High Guardian Spice is officially licensed original anime. One of the most billion dollar anime distributed companies, period. To clarify, I know there's some really good Crunchyroll originals like Tonikawa, even though that has a manga adaptation, God of High School, and Vina Pirate Princess, which actually released this year. But if you're going to make a half anime, half western style, have good facial expressions. Like the art direction feels empty somehow, and that's not something you should say in anything anime related unless they're really badly CGI animated. Like, I don't know, like these a animation style and pretty much facial expressions and character designs and everything else just feels lifeless. Or not even mature for that matter. If you're going to make an animation that conveys emotion to the face, at least make it not ordinary. Like, if you think I'm setting an expectation on the show like that, it's because I had an open mind and I wanted this to be better than it is. Like, low-key, I was hoping for a Monogatari, Kakeguri, Spy X Family, Nagatoro, or hell, Vivzy Pop levels of facial expressions. Which is probably expecting too much, so I shouldn't set it on a higher pedestal than it should be. But, for fuck's sake, Steven Universe, which is probably its predecessory, Marty McGee, Loud House, or hell even Spongebob, or Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has better animation and facial expressions than this! This is also a problem that I have with Space Jam 2. Love that movie the bits, by the way. Do its art direction and mixed media, like Spider-Verse levels, even with the simplest father-son art. You know, it's very cookie-cutter with no gingerbread. But LeBron James isn't the most award-winning actor in the making. The animation does double the work when it comes to acting, if anything. Hey, you're that famous basketball guy. Come on, aren't you LeBron James? Pugs Bunny knows who I am? <laughs> Whereas for High Guardian Spice, it's the opposite problem. It's a lot worse. The acting is there, but the animation doesn't translate or glue very well with the acting. Like, there's nothing to stick it in. No innuendo. Just both acting and animation just don't stick together very well. Well, they do, but it's not... It's mediocre. It's just detestably mediocre together, and that's... A lot worse than what Space Jam 2 did with, like, LeBron James and shit. Sandy, you pretty much nailed it right on the head. Animation is a huge part of anime. It's in the name for God's sake. And look, there are lots of anime with lackluster animation, but they at least have enough to convey what is happening. And they at least have stuff to make up for it. Like, one example I can think of is Keep Your Hands Off Isuki, is Isuki, Isuki, Keep Your Hands Off which has odd animation, but it keeps it simple and conveys what it can and makes up for it with great characters and story. High Guardian sadly does not do any of that, but maybe there's one way it can save itself. The whole reason I think the anime feels like it needs to exist. So let's recap. Animation. Blech. Voice work. One note and idiotic. Characters. One dimensional. Yeah, the show's not doing so well, but there may be one way the show can save itself. There's one thing the show obviously wants to be, and that's LGBTQ commentary and progressive commentary. By having some characters, one of which is a main character, being casually in lesbians with other girls. As well as heavy shipping of Rosemary and Sage, and yes I ship them shut up. And one being a man who, while not trans, wants to embrace his feminine side. Hell, we even have a teacher who is full-blown transgender. And look, let me make this abundantly clear. None of these are bad at all. Want to make a show with all these? Want to speak to young adults and teens going through this stuff? Then I say good, more power to you. I encourage more shows like this. We can always use more shows that have representation like that. 
throw me a shovel because this rabbit hole of a show couldn't get any more deeper. You literally, literally hit a bullseye. You actually hurt my left eyeball. Ah, shit. Ah, fuck. Ah, ah, fuck. <laughs> no, ah, fuck. Oh, oh, I am so glad. I am so glad you just found out that I have blood on my eyes. Good fucking job. Season, you have raised the best Sherlock in your entire fucking life. One of the biggest red flags for me in this show is that you want to watch an episode and the first thing you see is this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I deeply apologize, but what part of this show is sexual? I the mention of terms of blood, bastard, just the mention of the term sex and bastard, lesbians existing, some splotches of blood, the chesteria from that cat girl who is actually pretty cute. I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. Oh no! It's not like Crunchyroll has anything worse than that in their back fucking pocket! Also, no offense to the writers, but this is the most ham-fisted, blatant, condescending commentary I have ever seen in any anime or cartoon media period when talking about transition of gender. Did we honestly need a tutorial on how transition of gender works? Unless your general audiences are either toddlers or ignorant bitches, you do not need to spoon feed your audience whether transgender is. Especially how in recent years, the LGBT is very vocal. By all means, I have nothing against the LGBT community. I'm even a part of it. But I'm just saying, things do not need to be this way where you have to deep throat a trans explanation to your anime fans who are most likely 30 years or older or hell, half of your audiences are like young adults to 30 plus. Hi editor watch here. so I found this animation clip that actually is the transgender scene reanimated and retold. And honestly, it's everything I expected a transgender scene to be and to be rewritten as. Go check it out, link is gonna be in the description down below, it is beautiful. Okay, editor watch is over, back to the actual video. This also goes to the part where this one purple haired girl, I don't, I can't even, I can't even remember her name, that's when you know, is as subtle as a fucking baseball bat to the face. Well, I mean, your mom wasn't always so conservative. If you want, in my humblest opinion, a good example of LGBT representation, besides Steven Universe and a couple others, watch Kipo. They literally had a scene where one of the main characters explicitly says that he's gay and the main character went along with it because she understood and respects why he didn't reciprocate back to his sexuality. Rosemary, although she understood because of how spoon-fed the explanation is, says that she'd give anything to see where she is right now, which to me doesn't feel right and it seems like she was low-key dead naming him. This is like giving your general audiences a stern talking to, or a long lecture. That's not how you want to educate those who want to know about the LGBTQ community. Not to mention, I'd argue the world works against the message. Okay, so this one has magic, right? Well, thanks to that, the teacher talks about transitioning like it was a breeze thanks to magic. Now, full disclosure, I am also LGBTQ as I'm bisexual, and I like feminine items from time to time. I'm not fully transgendered though, or even transfluid. But even I know that transitioning is a complicated, painful, soul-crushing process that takes a physical and mental toll on whoever goes through it. But thanks to the magic in this world, they can say, oh yeah, I just use a spell to change, and I take a pill once a month to stay this way. Like, no! I really do feel like that pill argument was there just to try and relate to the real world, but that's not how it works. Please by all means commentate on transitioning, but that's not a good way to convey it. Tell the truth. It basically shows all the benefits of transitioning without any of the downsides. And I really hate to sound dramatic, but I do think in a small way if this was meant to be for teen viewers, it could be dangerous. Now if a trans person did write this, then maybe it was easy for them, I don't know. And I'm not transgender either. But I can say that I know trans people and anytime I've talked to them, it's never easy to go through this. 
And even when they fully transition, it's never easy, but they still feel very rewarded for actually doing it. But I also know plenty of trans people who regret transitioning, so please, if you are a teen and you think you're trans and you think it's that easy, it is not and you should talk to an actual doctor before considering it. Please. And while we're on the subject of magic, there's also the old versus new commentary with old magic versus new magic. One of the main characters, Sage, especially is someone who's raised on old magic but needs to adapt to new magic while learning. Hey, hey, have you got the message yet? Huh? Do you? Do you? Well, let me spell it out for you. It's an old versus new conflict. Now again, it's a good message, don't get me wrong. And they at least take a middle ground with it, which is admittedly something I haven't seen done before. So I'll give it credit there at the very least. Not to mention it does lead to a very satisfying moment for Sage in the finale. But it's still coming off as blatantly obvious to the point where you're just saying, yeah, I get it. Not to mention, again, it kind of shoots itself in the foot, as I rarely have ever seen old magic used in the show. I may be remembering it wrong, but outside of the final episode, I rarely see old magic used. I freely admit I might be remembering it wrong, but if it was used and I'm having this much trouble remembering it, that's saying a lot. Also, there's the minor problem that magic causes some continuity errors. Like, there's a point where they're trapped in a cave and it's like, is teleportation magic not a thing in this universe? And if it's not, fine, but at least explain that. This is why a magic system should be written for very carefully, as it can be a get out of jail free card, so when characters are in a situation where magic could help them, and they don't use it, it becomes frustrating. So yeah, and needless to say, this show doesn't really have much of a leg to stand on. Everything on a technical level and on the character levels is kind of not good, and even the commentary, the one thing I think the anime really wanted to say isn't even that great or well written. But then, something miraculous happens. High Guardian Spice gets okay. We've been harsh as hell to this show, that's a fact. But simply put, there are also some good things to it. At least in my opinion anyway. Because you see around episode 7, we actually get what I would consider the first episode to be really teetering into good. The story is solid, the fights are actually well animated, hell even the characters are very likable and have a good heartfelt moment. Now it's not perfect mind you. Again there's the whole plot with magic and the dialogue is still a bit meh in spots. Also that dragon saying I'm okay and exploding while it's very funny felt too much like parody. We also get a new character in the form of Olive the kitty villain and sees honestly one of the best characters in the show. Not so much as a straight up villain, but as a sympathetic lackey who is more forced to do what she has to do, like kill the girls but doesn't want to. See, what's a pillow under a stone kid to save them? Come on, that's just wholesome. The only things I unironically like about this show are the characters. Olive, Amorless, and that one background character that looks like me. Okay, okay, fine. I have a short hair bias. <laughs> Apparently you have a type. More like a relatability type, like... Hashtag relatable kind of thing. And we're realist because while she is a pretty badly written character, very Sundere like, but not the best kind of Sundere, and very petty at that, she's the most enjoyable out of the main cast. Parsley, sure, but Emerilis carries the show by a lot. Plus, if done right, I'm a sucker for little shit characters. Emerilis is like an alligator to me. She's flawless as a character. I feel like without those characters, I wouldn't sit through anything from this show. Sure, whatever you say. And in any case, I do give you this. She does get better as it goes on. I think even the writers knew she would make a terrible antagonist and made her an on-off side member instead. And honestly, I think that works a lot better. Not to mention her relationship with Snapdragon is just cute. Actually, speaking of, Snapdragon is another character I absolutely love in this show. While the writing can make his journey a bit hard at times, like seriously, that whole men can't have emotions thing, that was just painful. I do still like his journey overall. While he doesn't want to be fully trans, or at least I hope that's not the route they were going with him, he does want to be more open to his feminine side, and Emerilus is not even batting an eye to painting his nails. It's just like, yes, that's the writing I've been yearning for from this show. He just asks nervously as he should, but is treated normally by his friend. And it's only the asshole jock that treats him like scum for dressing like a mermaid, which he is totally adorable as by the way. I want to see his journey and embraces more feminine styles and clothing. I'm kind of rooting for him. Not to mention as the series goes on, I think Parsley is genuinely hilarious at times. 
And Thyme is definitely top tier waifu material. Kind of similar to、uh, Marco from Star vs. e r or、uh, Golden. You know he's gonna kill you for that now. But then again, he does rock that belly dancer suit.、Uh, no. I'm not in the mood to pass off from blushing, thank you. Stay over there. Anyway, I guess if there is one more thing I do like, well, call me crazy, but I'm rooting for Rosemary and Sage. But they're cute, okay? Besides, I want to give this show some credit. Because even with these good aspects, it is still deeply flawed. Flawed, but not unsalvageable. So, we've talked about the good and the bad, but there's one thing I feel a lot of reviews of the show fail to really talk about. And that's can this show really be saved? And yeah, I think it can. There is definitely a skeleton of a good show buried underneath the sloppy writing and lackluster work all around. I can't, for the life of me, enjoy this show unironically. There are so many bumps within this show that it feels like I'm driving a rocky road. This show could have had its salvation if both the writing and characters, besides the three characters we just mentioned, are not as bland as oatmeal and coffee with no milk or sugar. Well, I like black coffee sometimes, but I do agree. It's not that the characters are unsavable. We literally just mentioned a few that we do like. Heck, we even criticize Slime Boy's mic quality, but he can be pretty funny sometimes. Heck, even the ones we don't care for can be saved. Rosemary just needs to be given some kind of quirk other than happy. I think we got something like that in the Halloween 2 parter, where she entered super serious mode, or how willing she is to sacrifice herself to help her friends in battle. Those are good, expand on those more, and for the love of God, don't let dead parent syndrome define her. As for Sage, maybe give her a bit more independence? We got some good conflict between her and Rosemary, so explore that more. Why are they friends to each other in the first place? Parsley got really good as the series went on, but she's still a bit too Mary Sue like, so give her a bit more flaws. I also think her family commentary was really good, so expand on that. As for Thyme, well, she's perfect, so stay the course. Not to mention all the smaller changes like better direction all around with animation, VAs, and writing. Oh, and also for the love of God, pick an age group and stick in that age group. The problem with this show is that it doesn't know what the audience wants. Literally, I, I can't find the general audience for this show other than Gen Z, in which I am in, but that's beside the point. Go for a teens young adults area in my book because I feel like the social commentary will work best in that area. And yes, we are harsh. We are very harsh to this show, there is no denying that, but that's only because we see potential. We feel like that if this was given better direction and better quality to control, it could be so much better. Alright, let's end this suffering already. Give me that axe. All me are familiar faces. So, overall, no matter how you slice it, this show is at best could be a decent parody, but at worst, is just deeply flawed all around. And the fact that it took them till Backlash to fix the audio tells me that they were okay with this finished product. They were okay with how it was, and that's just sad. And I wish and hope everyone who worked on this can get better work after this. Because there is genuine talent here, I can sense it. The dialogue is 99% robotic, and so is the animation and facial expressions in this show. I feel like I'm watching an anime version of MLPG 3.5 or MLPG 3. It feels like the passion in this show isn't in the right place. I can't say anything positive about this show without either watching Spilling the Milk's comedic commentary on this show or watching an abridged series on Amaryllis or Olive. The only time that it got good is around the last two episodes. Despite my harshness towards the show, I came to the show with an open mind, and the result is a Pandora's box. I understand the intention with the LGBT representation, but again, that's mostly what they focused on. Never mind the story or the lore for that matter. Thief in Universe does something similar, but the result is much better compared to this in exposition. But hey, to each of their own. If you like this bootleg little witch Madoka Magica, then good for you! You enjoyed something I don't seem to find enjoyment out of. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, yes, we are harsh, but only because we can see potential. If I can speak honestly, I know how hard it is to craft a story. I have so many show ideas, and most of them I turn into tabletop adventures. Because I just don't have the time or budget to even create a pilot for any of these. And it's such a big deal to get a studio that makes good money to produce and sponsor you. 
It can be a great feeling to have. Your creation has been made into a reality, but sometimes a good idea needs more polish and help, and creating a show is a collaborative effort. Believe me, I'd kill for this kind of thing, so I understand what the creator is going through. So I hope by some miracle if the creator ends up seeing this, that from the backlash and from our negative output, they can find positive in it and can help them for the next project or god forbid season 2. The term everyone's a critic is there for a reason, because we are all critics and we should listen to critics. It's the only way how we improve. Hey, if they have a season 2, which they teased very much at the end, maybe they'd put more effort into their writing, animation, and facial expressions. I really want them to prove me wrong here, I really do, but from the looks of it, it seems like it's unlikely. Only time will tell, I guess. We can only hope that Spice will return to this anime, but till then, I'm the Watch Voice saying keep on watching. I'm Sleepy Charm and Scene.